Hello and welcome to the van build vlog. I'm not entirely 100% today. I've got a little bit of a sort of tickly cough in my throat. And you know that thing where you just feel mildly unwell to the point where your head has completely switched off and you're not entirely with it. That's how I am today. So if this vlog is a bit weird and I don't seem to quite know where I am, that's why. It's nothing serious, just a cold, but I just don't feel 100% like I know where I am and what I'm doing. Probably then not the best day to attempt to cut lino to fit the floor, but that's what needs to be done, so I'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. Before I do that though, there are a couple of little bits to show you, such as the carpeting now on this uh, central pillar, which you can see I made a mess up there. Look at that, that's nasty, isn't it? Um, that may be hidden by the end of the kitchen unit if I'm lucky. Apart from that, that went on reasonably well. You'll also notice, obviously, I've got the wires coming out of there, a bit of trunking there, round the corner and up through this ducting. And I don't know what I've done with the middle bit of that. I had to cut it into three pieces because of the curve of the wood and there wasn't enough bend in the ducting to just fit, so I cut it into three pieces, and I don't know what I've done with the middle one now. Never mind. Goes up there, and then that's the cabling for the fan and the lights. Now, it's not pretty, I know, but this will be hidden behind... Well, this bottom bit will be behind the uh, unit, which has the... <sighs> I told you my brain was switched off. The unit has the hob and the sink on it. And then because the sink will be about here, I'm thinking this will all be hidden by a splashback. So you won't even see that with any luck. Meanwhile, over the top of the door, a little bit more ducting holding that cable that you remember goes across the top there and then disappears into the van and goes down that middle pillar to the door. Now I know that is also not pretty, but I'm going to cover that with a little bit of carpet. So hopefully it'll be camouflaged a bit and sort of the same over this side you remember there's a big bundle of wires that comes out there and goes all the way across they're all um, scrunched up together they are and they disappear over there so i wanted them protected with something rather than just dangling down so again more ducting trunking ducting whatever and i'll put some carpet over that to hide both the trunking and also the silver um, vapor barrier stuff behind it but that's for another day, I think. Today, my attention is turning to the floor. Before I do anything with the lino, I need to give the inside of the van a jolly good vacuum clean so there's no bits of grit and debris and so on that will be pushing up into the lino and perhaps preventing it sticking. So let's get to cleaning. Right, I have unfurled the lino. It's a three metre long by two metre wide roll, which was rolled up at the two metre uh, dimension. So I had to put it across the van and then pull it out and then wrap the edges in because I want to be able to have the middle bit ready, if you like, and then cut round the edges, if that makes sense. And I think this is going to be very slow and probably involve quite a lot of swearing. So I think I might just pop the camera onto time-lapse mode. Well, considering I've only done lino twice before in my life, and the last time was about 14 years ago, I'm pretty pleased with that. Didn't rip and tear in places I didn't want it to. 
and by and large it's cut to shape it's not stuck down yet that is just after I've trimmed it I'm going to take the scissors around one or two bits just to straighten up a couple of tiny edges but overall I am pretty pleased with that I did make two cock-ups towards the end presumably as I was getting cocky you can see there in fact let me just switch hand hold on I'm gonna get wobbly there we go I actually overcut so that you could start to see the board beneath it so I've had to cut a strip back and I'm just gonna trim that off so it fills in the gap and there's a similar silly little cut where you can just see the wood over there but bearing in mind the bed is in that corner you are not going to see it, so I'm happy to live with that. Just need to decide what to do with this fantastic cardboard tube now. It's too good to throw out. Somebody's hamsters or gerbils would love that to run along. But I don't know anybody with hamsters or gerbils. Oh well. The shop that sold me the lino, rather ridiculously, didn't have in stock any of the adhesive to stick it down. So I'm going to take a scrap piece and the trim fix that I used to stick the carpet up and see if the two are compatible. See, you know, make sure the trim fix doesn't dissolve the lino or something absurd. And also just make sure it sticks it properly to a piece of wood. And if that's okay, then I will use that. Bearing in mind, of course, that as soon as I put the furniture in as well, the bottom, what would you call them, battens of the furniture will be screwed down through the lino into the ply floor as well. And that will obviously hold the lino in place. But the glue, I suppose really, is just to make sure that the lino stays stuck down rather than having any little bubbles or, you know, bits coming up in it. So we'll give that a go and leave it overnight. And if it's all good, I will glue this down. It's a few days later and I'm still getting over that wretched cold which has left me feeling all lethargic and bleh for the last few days. However, things are getting better. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, the forecast for the next few days is great as well. So time to crack on with things. I did do that test of using the trim fix to stick the lino to the wood. It worked fine, so I have now put that down. With that done, time to turn my attention to interior cabinetry. In order to build the cabinet, I have brought out the toilet, which may seem like an odd choice of measuring device, but I want the toilet to sit under the bed or under the cabinet, so they need to be at least as tall as that is, which is about 40 centimetres. It's quite the problem, really, because there is no good place to put the loo. You don't want it over here on the left, because this is the kitchen area, so you don't really want your loo near your kitchen and I'm not sure there's really going to be the width there anyway. Across the back here, well remember you've got to be able to get to the toilet and with the kitchen there and the bed there, the toilet could only go here but I think that's going to get in the way of the gas cylinder. And then up here is the bed so the toilet is going to end up under the bed so yes one way or the other you, I'm going to end up sleeping with my head over the, over the poo tank, head or feet I suppose. Um, I mean, once they're sealed up, they don't smell. It isn't just a particularly nice thought, I suppose. But there's no other good place to put it. So it's going to have to go, I think, in that corner, or possibly this corner. Either way, the height is the, is the crucial thing. The units will be over the top of that, and they'll just come over the top of the wheel arch. And that sets the height there. You know what, it goes there quite neatly, it just fits between the wheel arch and the back. And the bed was already going to be that high anyway, and it's practically at the back. I've always envisioned that my head would be up there and my legs down there, because my arms can go into the space where it slightly widens out for the sliding door. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. It feels wider at that end, and therefore I thought that's where my head end would be, so my feet would be over this, and this is practically at the end anyway. So in fact my feet would only come up to about here. I'm going to keep playing with things, and we'll see what comes out. You may well be thinking that the layout should have been planned out a long time ago, and yes, you do have a point, but it's all well and good in theory, but when you actually start building it and putting things in, plans have to be fluid, I think. 
Confession time. Many hours have passed since I recorded that last clip. I have spent the day trying, fairly fruitlessly, to assemble some timber battens into some form of box-like shape. And I have cut them, and I have measured them, and I measured not twice, but thrice and even four times before I cut them, and yet still, strangely, they all came out slightly different lengths, slightly different angles, some of the wood was bowed, some of the wood was just stretchy. I swear it was stretchy. And my attempt to make a simple wooden box, the first box section that was going to go here to my left, Frankenstein himself would have made a neater patchwork of bits than I have made. That is why we have skipped to this, and I have not shown you me doing it, because it was not a pretty sight. There was a lot of swearing, and I mean, I was getting really annoyed. Properly annoyed. Annoyed enough that I was not in the in any frame of mind to be filming. Really very, very having a childish tantrum sort of annoyed. Um, it's not been a good day. And that's just making the first box. It's currently sitting just outside, loads of glue on it and screws and everything trying to hold it together into roughly a box sort of shape. But it's not pretty. Um, I'm wondering whether in fact, because there's two ways of doing this aren't there, you can batten and then use some ply, thin ply just over the top so your battening is the strength, or you can do the whole thing in solid 12 or 15 mil ply and forget battens, you just cut it out of chunks of solid ply. And I'm wondering whether there's a, a better argument for doing it out of solid ply. But I've seen both methods, so I thought I'd give this a go. And because I was cutting it all on the mitre saw, it should have been bang on 90 degrees, bang on measured. It should have just been bosh, 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 cut a load of bits to the same length, glue them together. Jobs are good one, but it wasn't. So <coughs> I think we'll leave it there for today. And uh, it's another nice day tomorrow, so perhaps I'll come back to it if I'm in a better temper. And we'll have a start on either the bed frame going that way as it joins the horrific box I've just made, or I might start trying to make the bit that's going to house the um, hob and sink unit. We'll see how the mood takes me. Anyway, I think I'm off for a nice gin and tonic now.